Patricia, you fan? All right. So for those who came learning. up, Andy and Ian, we are uh, learning in the time of Christ, part two. Oh, part two. And Andrew, Andrew just shared a, um, a book. Well, you can click on this guy and that will just get you in. Da -da -da. All so right. Why are, we, why are we starting at part two, Paul? Well, that's what's um, um, because the part one was after the first book. Oh, I see. See, it used to be all in one, uh, one as a, at the very end, and then in a new ver version, it came <coughs> as a um, a after each book. Oh, I see. Three of them. And this is a part two because we are just after a book two. I get you. Okay. Just before book three. No worries. This is really good stuff in here. It's really good information. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. 8.26. Readers who have now moved away from their desire to learn something that will feed their minds or egos will seldom to will seldom continue to to this next level that's very true <laughs> the next level brings with it the same situation the reader encountered in receiving the course but the reader will now encounter these situations in life the reader is no longer. Can we stop for a minute? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just wondering where we're reading from. We're, we're in the addendum, learning in the time of Christ. Mm -hmm. chapter, part two. Chapter two. Yeah, part two. Just keep going mm -hmm. down. Keep scrolling down until you get section two. Okay. I think it's in Sorry. italics in the old version. Okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you. But the reader will now encounter these situations in life. The mm -hmm. reader is no longer only a reader. Their experience of this course has extended beyond reading and beyond the classroom situation. Now, a time may come when studying truly seems to be in order. The guidance provides provided by the reading may seem to come and go and their desire to rely on what they have learned will grow. They may desire to backtrack, review, or begin to highlight passage to return to again and again. New questions may arise and a desire for feedback or discussion grows stronger. This may also be precisely the time when the reader is so caught up in experience and learning in life. That return to a group or classroom situation feels next to impossible. Rather than being in a standard learning situation, what the reader who is now experiencing life in a new way is doing is attempting to reinforce what he or she already knows and has already accepted. The language is returned to as a helpful friend will be returned to for judgment, free advice. What those who begin to experience life in a new way begin to discover are the patterns of thoughts and behavior that are most deeply entrenched in them. They feel in need of assistance. I'm complete. Thanks, Ruth. Uh, Tim, do you want to go next? Sorry, who? Kim, you. Me, oh, okay. 
<laughs> At this point, groups may need to become more flexible, meet less frequently, or even disband in favour of former classmates, meeting in more casual and spontaneous encounters. It remains important for facilitators and group members to be available to one another, if at all possible, during this time. For what is being gained through experience is still in need of being shared. Mm. This sharing can offer a rich and rewarding opportunity for differences to be revealed and for the welcome realisation that differences do not make separate. Do not make separate. Okay. The forward motion, regardless of a group's configuration, is still the same. It is one movement away from learning and toward acceptance of what is. While differences may be highlighted in this time, what will be revealed through sharing is that while experiences may differ greatly and seem to be offering diverse learning situations, the individuals will actually be coming to many very similar new insights and truth. Okay, that's my two. Um, Andrew, you want to go next? Sure. The impatience of the earlier level may seem to have increased as these experiences will be moving each individual along at her own pace. Comparisons may arise and some may feel they are not advancing as quickly as others, while those moving quickly may feel in need of time to catch their breath. Now, despite the rapidity of movement or lack thereof, to read the treaties together will likely feel as if it is almost a waste of valuable time. Thus, gatherings of those working with the treaties will naturally include more sharing of experiences. The facilitator's task is now one of placing these experiences in context. After giving the group time to talk, the facilitator might choose a brief passage that will fit within the content of the sharing. Always, it is the facilitator's role to guide the individual group members away from inclinations, which may be strong during this time, to figure out, uh, to figure things out. Problem solving is to be discouraged. Trust is to be encouraged. Often a discussion can be facilitated greatly by the question, how might we be able to look at this situation in a new way? To encourage the gentleness of the art of thought over the relentless stridency of the thinking mind is always helpful. Mm. Obsessive thinking is always ruthless, judgmental and wearing on the thinker. He or she needs help in breaking its grip and should never be allowed to suffer. It's me. Beautiful. Cat's reading today. I read mine. Yep. Assisting individuals with the recognition of patterns is also a highly valuable service that facilitators and other group members can provide. The entrenched patterns of the past are difficult to dislodge 
mm. even when they have been recognised. Individuals can be encouraged here to watch the parade go by as what has gone unhealed is brought forward for acceptance, forgiveness and letting go. Wow, that's a really key sentence. Read that one again. The entrenched patterns of the past are difficult to dislodge, even when they have been recognised. Individuals can be encouraged here to watch the parade go by as what has gone unhealed is brought forward for acceptance, forgiveness and letting go. Yes. Mm. Pretty much everything that we deny, we cannot handle, will just come back again. That's all it is. You know, sometimes we wonder why things reappear again, even so we think we have forgiven them. But probably we haven't forgiven them thoroughly, otherwise they would never show up again. Can you see? So if something comes up again, oh, thank you. Thank you. Here it comes again. I must have not seen something where it hasn't been released yet. Thank you, darling. Thanks for the pause. With the letting go of each old pattern or situation that seems fraught with peril, a cloud of despair with it will lift. A little more of darkness recedes and a little more light is available to show the way. Mm -hmm. I'll call you next. Often, he, the facilitator, will meet as well individual assessment and self doubt. Group members may wonder if they are missing something. They may feel as if they have not experienced unity or as if they are no closer to knowing themselves or God. They may feel as if this course of study, which seemed to be working as well for a while now, is letting them down. <coughs> they may wonder where and when the peace, ease, and abundance promised by this course will arrive. These need help in staying grounded in the present and reminders and reminders that they are no longer seeking. <coughs> they need your reassurance that this time of engagement with life is just what is needed to integ integrate what has been learned. A return to the simple words that begin the treaties of un on unity would be appropriate. A treaties that you do not yet as yet recognize is going to be recognized. A treasure call. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> wow, that doesn't make much sense. <laughs> <laughs> A treaties that you do not as yet. <laughs> you said it again. <laughs> I get it, didn't I? Only <laughs> once. Save me. A treasure. Yes. <laughs> a treasure <coughs> that you do not yet, do not as yet recognize is going to be recognized. Got <laughs> something mm -hmm. stuck in my throat. Can somebody continue? <coughs> yeah, I'll continue. Once recognized, it will begin to be regarded as an ability. And finally, through experience, it will become your identity. Oh. The achievements of the past, achievements that awarded credentials, certificates and degrees, admiration, respect and status, are now a thing of the past. What individuals may well be looking for is their reward for the investment they have made in this coursework. While they are looking for it to show up in an old way, they will miss the new ways 
that are being revealed to them. Ooh. Remind them gently that the achievements of the past were not lasting and they and that they are not what they would truly want now. Remind them that the goal is reached in being who they are at last. It is present, not in the future. It is with them, not beyond them. The treasure is them. Mm. You are the, your, your own treasure. Da, da, da. Mm. On to the next one. Yeah. I love the title here. What's the title? Acceptance of the State of Grace of the Newly Identified Child of God, which is you. Particularly you, Kevin. Oh. <laughs> so I've gone back to Chapter 1 now. Yeah, yeah. yeah now we're going to go back to Chapter 1. Well, I'll be about half an hour looking for that. So, Ruben? <laughs> Book three. Chapter one. Acceptance of the state of grace of the newly identified child of God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I come to you today as co creator of the self. You are and the self you hope to represent with your physical form. I come to you today not as a personal self who is other than you, but as a divine self who is the same as you. In our union, we bear the sameness of the Son of God in going forth with the vision of unity you become as I was during life. You receive and you give from the well of the Spirit. You need not prepare or plan. You need only to claim your inheritance, mm -hmm. your gifts, yourself. What this means in practical terms is that you let the personal self step back and the true self step forward. Realize that all of your concerns are still for the personal self, a self whom you continue to believe can fail to fulfill or live your mission and your purpose. You see, this failure occurring through ineptness of speech, through inappropriateness of attire, through lack of physical estimate, through lack of intelligence, through lack, in other words, of abilities of the personal self. As long as you see such visions, you see the pattern of the personal self going forward much as it did before. You do not see the new, the new self of elevated form mm -hmm. or the true self of divine union. You see the separate self is still trying, is still struggling, is still fumbling along. You do not see the natural grace and order of the universe extending into the realm of 
the elevated cell, the space of the elevated cell. As long as you see in this way, you keep the personal self in the forefront, rather than allowing and hiding the personal self and the stepping back that is required in order for that true self to step forward. All right. Let's, I'm let's pause here. This is so good. How are you guys going with this particular section? The true self stepping forward. Resignates for me. Resignates. Mm. Tell me more. I feel the that there's there's a there's more value in that in the in the true self than all of the seeking mm -hmm. that I've done in the past. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. So you just step back. I'll step back and let that lead the way. It's actually a lesson in the Course of Miracles as well. I step back and let him lead the way. I often turn it into, I step back and let my feelings lead the way. Because your divine self is more a felt thing than an idea. Yeah, the true self. And another good way of, of seeing this is like, pick somebody on a screen and attempt to see the Christ in them. So like God reveal, reveal a Christ in this person. And then you step back and you wait and notice what it is when you see it, what is it you were looking with? Anybody has any success in that? It's an intent. Intent to see instead of projections and, and judgments, you just see Christ in the other. Not, not my column. It's above my pay grade at the moment. Say it again. I said, not me. It's above my pay grade at the moment. I can't. I can't do it. In a way, I, I could say almost. I mean, you could do it lying down, but you know, sometimes it helps to be a little bit more erect to actually see it because you're you're looking with your whole being. And what I suggest is that when you do it, I would like you to see like what are you looking at with. You know, there is a part of you. It's like imagine your your heart has a has eyes, not the pump that runs the blood, but your heart heart center. Yeah, imagine there's there's a like heart or uh, eyes of the heart. Because this this is that which with which you will see the Christ in the other. Right. Well, I think in order to do that, you would have to let the personal self go because that yeah. sort of gets in the way. It just automatically steps back because you can't use the, the personal self to do it. Yeah. However, personal self will be on it. Like it will still be there to have that experience. We'll go, aha, oh, I can see how I've been judging things wrongly. But it kind of acquiesces. I kind of just comes comes and joins the heart. Eventually, even ego will go like, oh, I don't think I can keep going this way, the way I am, and we'll just give up. Mm. Seems... As long as you're coming from the personal ego self, there's suffering of some kind. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you might have um, some sense of um, joy or peace, but it's temp temporary. Mm -hmm. oh. okay. In a way, it's temporary because you, 
you have an experience and go like, oh, I'm having an experience. And right there, you're, you're, you're putting already an observation on it. So you got to learn how to step back and let it flow, let it flow. You will learn how to not to interrupt it. You have thoughts coming in still. You might be completely in a Christ experience and next minute this tiny med idea creeps in and you go like, oh yeah, there's a tiny med idea that I'm not going to be involved in. So you train yourself not to get, not to steal the show, not to let the mind to, to, um, to dawn upon you again, to have a grip on you. You simply go, oh, there is a thought, I'll let it go. That's how you go from, from temporary to uh, constant. You just don't engage. You go like, oh, this is not bringing love into my presence. Probably don't need, doesn't need um, an attachment. Make sense? Mm. For me, the oh. hardest part is remembering to to do that. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's the whole training of this, you know. It'll just yeah. one day you just sit there. I'm going like, oh, hmm, and you just simply don't do it, and you mm. will feel how like the rest of you begins to lead up. I had that this morning, I was doing a course of Course in Miracle lesson and I was just like, boom, boom, boom. It's, oh, the, the kingdom within begins to reverberate itself. Like it's there, it's just so close to you. But if you engaged only in your mind, there's no way you can see it. That's why it says like, let's step back from that which is thinking even right now, put that aside and let your heart come forward. How's that? I step back, let my heart be the presence. And the heart is something you got to feel. You can't imagine it. It's not an imagination. It's a it's a sensual experience, really. Okay, let's do it another way. Think of something you absolutely love the most in this world. Say, God help me now. What it is that I love the most in this world? What is it? You don't have to name it. You got to discover it. Tell me when you have it. Put your hand up when you have it. Yep. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. Keep keep now keep feeling that. Now forget what it is that you that it is. Just keep feeling the love behind that. Mm-hmm. Just feel yeah. It will smile you as one, one first way how you know. It will just relax you a little bit and puts a tiny little smile on your face like, oh my God, I love this. I love I love this story because I, I like using this story because my sister who was dying of cancer, I said, I was trying to do it with her. I'm going like, Nelly, what do you love the most? And she goes, cigarettes. Uh. <laughs> But when she said cigarettes, there was all the love and and light in there. It doesn't matter what it is, as far as you genuinely love it. She said, I just freaking love smoking. I can't help it. You know, like, I just can't. It's just so beautiful. And she just lit up and there was like face of Christ right there. So it doesn't matter what it is. Is that you genuinely love it? That's the most important part to it. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you just feel the love. Forget the cigarettes. Forget the 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 focus of your attention on something, and just to feel the love that you have for this thing. Often we are with with kids, you know. I personally have it with God, you know. Like 
what's that love? And just feel only the feeling of love. Good. Good. There you go. Yes. Yes. And just keep allowing that love more now. Just step back and let the love go forward. Beautiful. That's it. Mm -hmm. And feel it even more, the love that you feel. See, now it's no longer attached to anything. Only you're feeling is your genuine love, which is always there. We attach it to something, and then with that something is not around. We do not we not experience this love, but this love is there all the time. Yeah. You see? Mm. And then feel it even more. Make sure you feel it all, all the way in your feet and your legs. It's got to be embodied until you begin to feel like almost like a sense of elevation. Every cell in your body is now are giving this love. And now begin to offer this love to everyone. To everyone, I offer this love. And just give it. Yeah, exactly. Keep giving it. Keep giving it. <laughs> Keep giving it. And more you give it, more you have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You feel it even more. It's fill the whole room with it. Like imagine it's coming out of you like a sun begins to shine out like, or like a heater. <laughs> it expands the heat. Fill the whole room with it. Mm. Yeah. Because mm. it's by giving it that you will actually sustain it. It's like it's totally inclusive. Yeah, Absolutely. the way... I've gone about it before is you try it, you sort of think you have to get love by feeling about a certain thing a certain way and then it's only for mm -hmm. those things. Right, right. You know, but this is includes everything. Includes everything because what you do with that, once that love is established, you might look at it someone who has you have a grievance with mm. and if you can find that same love in them, it's like that every living being has a heart. And you begin to see the heart of the individual who might be completely separated from their own heart, but you see it. And that's important. That's that's how you will forgive the world because you see that every living being has a heart. And if you see that, then you're seeing your own heart because you can only see that with your heart. And that's how forgiveness really works. Yeah. What else is there to do, really? Uh, yeah, tell me. You know? <laughs> I noticed when you first started this, when you talked about looking at the screen and looking at someone, I almost found that a, a barrier. It's like I'm distracted by the, the vision of what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. and I would be drawn to some judgment or conclusions. It's like you almost have to close your eyes. Uh -huh. Eventually, like, you will see without your eyes. This is where the body's yeah. eyes have become useless. Because suddenly you see with your heart. Yeah. And that is what we're trying to awaken in ourselves. To look, looking with the heart. So it's going within instead of going out. It really. absolutely is. And yet we're using whatever is around us, you know. And then you will have this experience when you close your eyes and you will be able to see the inner. You will see that we are joined with everything. Mm. We are oneness. But it's not just an idea. It's like we are all one. Yeah, well, what the fuck do I do with that? If you don't <laughs> experience it, it's just an imagination. And that's not the real deal. The real deal, when you start... When you start virtually crying, going like, oh, my God, we are all one. And you can feel it experientially. It's, it's, you feel it in your little toe. It's not just another mental little line from some kind of book that has some wisdom. It's your own experience. 
of the Christ in you. Paul, I haven't felt that we're all one. I've had experiences, but I haven't really felt that. Um, do you feel it very often? Yeah, like most of the time. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Well, I'll just keep practicing. Mm -hmm. Well, ask God. Say, God, where the fuck are you now? Where are you? Because you know what? You can't achieve this by yourself. There you go. Look at that. You see? Like that, like shape shifts you. We got to use this ingredient. The ingredient is God. And to actually call to God with all the passion. You know, it's not like beach and you shall receive. It's like ask with all your heart and all your strength and all your mind. For me, it helps when I say the word fuck. It's like a password to God for me. Like, God, what the fuck is going on? I can't feel anything. <clears throat> there it is. Like, hey, my son, I like when you talk dirty to me. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, guys, but hey. <laughs> we got to dislodge these old patterns. You know, there are these old structures that are keeping us prisoners. And any new way, this course of love is just a new way of going like, hey, try it this way. Yeah? But we got to engage in this feeling sensuality. You know? Really feel. Like, I feel the love of God within. It's not just a thought. You got to feel it and then give it to sustain it. So you become like this constant giving of yourself a being, become an oozer. See? Yeah. Anyway, it's a good one to practice, and particularly on your own. No one's around. You see, what do I really love? You know, it could be anything. It could be even an unhealthy thing, like a coffee. Yeah, I love God. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, God, help me now. Yeah, feel feel the love for God. Feel that love. Feel it more. Feel it more, and make that the main part of your day. It's just like God, I love you. And if I go more precise, I would say. How do you want to be loved by God? Yeah, that's it. Did you feel that, Patricia? <laughs> yes. See, it's written all over you. It's like your face virtually shape-shifted. Right? It's like it when we connect to this source in us, it's not far away. It's actually so close that we miss it for for the simplicity of it mm. beautiful that's it and see right, right now and the minute you go there i feel connected with you more it's almost like that's a holy instant yeah and that's how we eventually begin to connect with everyone on this profound Level. Beautiful. Mm. Yeah? And you just keep feeling it. Once you have it, you just don't stop feeling it. Don't let your mind come in and disrupt this. Oh, God. You know? Yeah. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That question really helps. That one, how do I want to be loved by God? Yeah, how do you want to be loved by God? Tell us. Because <laughs> you know what? That's it, guys. We have this idea. I want to be, you know, I just want to experience God. But how? Because God goes like, well, how do you want me to, ex ex how, you, how do you want to get to know me? How do you, how do you want to be loved by me? So what is it? Joy. Joy. You want to feel joy? Say, God, I want to I want to feel I want to get to know you through joy. Say it. God, 
I want to get to know you through joy. Yeah, exactly. Look at you. <laughs> it's, it's next minute, it's written all over you. It's right there. Do you know? Because now you're specifically asking. Ask and you shall receive. Right? And there's a second question that's also very cool. It's like, how do you want to love God? Yeah. It's, yeah. It feels like I take on more of a feminine a feminine essence when I please. When I please. That. That's beautiful, man. That's that's mm. the real deal. Be that, don't be afraid. You know, it's really important for us men to be able to fully, fully feel the feminine inside of us. To a point where you marry her. You wanna get married, marry her first. Marry the feminine inside of you. Don't be afraid to show it. Beautiful. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Don't ever let it stop. That Actually, that part of your feminine will awaken your masculine like never before. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Shall we go on? <laughs> Kim, you're next. My God. <laughs> I'll give it a try. <laughs> ah. It's almost like you have to now leave all that behind and come back to this, eh? Yeah. Like, oh, yes. Beautiful. Whoa. Don't. Stay there. That's it. Can you guys see what I'm at, what I'm pointing to? Yeah, it's gotta be a living, it's gotta be a living experience. And we'll we'll bring up, and sometimes we'll bring masculine in, in a fem in a women, and we'll bring them the because those are the polar opposites in ourselves that we actually are fighting. You know, if you see a patri if you're a woman and you see a patriarchal world out there, where does it come from? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's all you will see, and it's all you will project, and then you will protect yourself, and you will hide, but you're hiding from your own images of of that. And then you will attract it into your life on top of it. You will meet I, some... Yeah, lately I've just been experiencing men as such beautiful creatures, you know, like... Bless you. Know, they're, they're exactly. adorable. Exactly. Completely adorable. Yeah. That's it. See, that's your inner masculine waking up. This is how yeah. your presence will come in. Your genuine, pure presence. Right. When that pure masculine presence in you awakens, your yeah. feminine will explode into it. And that is the awakening. That is oh. the birth of Christ. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bring it on. <laughs> it's got to happen in you first. Don't wait for some savior. It's not coming. Oh. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And same for man. If you see if you see your feminine side as like something we should not bring out, watch out. You are killing your own awakening right there. That's interesting because like in my kung fu practice, I feel like so I've just got all this extra energy and and it's just I can't stop it. It's just like, yeah. And I don't. I love it. Like I don't care what. Um, Beautiful. How, how it's perceived, I think, you know, it's important just to let it flow, you know. Yeah. I mean, look and what it, happens when you, how you look when you speak about it. You're alive. You're like, oh, I don't care. This is yeah, how yeah. I want it. Exactly. <laughs> like you become so you. You become yeah, so and it's, you. And it's, oh, it's so, it's so yeah. invigorating. Yeah. And, <laughs> it um, is invigorating. And, and fun. You know, it's fun. Beautiful. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, you had to go to Kung Fu because you had to awaken this kind of part of you that's that's more yeah. solid, you know, more like yang. You know. And yeah, like you say, it's ironic that in allowing that to come out, the feminine is stronger too. So feminine can it's not it's it's not either or; it's both together type of thing. Because the feminine will feel this inner safety and embrace. Yes. You oh. see, your own inner feminine will have an. It will be held within yourself. It will feel safe. It will open up. It will birth the Christ in you. Oh. It is really the way of of Jesus and the way of Mary, as is coming later on in the dialogues. And the way of Mary is the internal inner awakening. Yeah. And it is very much feminine. This whole decade is all in this feminine realm. And including women, like women lost the feminine side. I'm sorry. Yeah, I felt like yeah. I was just going through the motions of something. Yeah. Not even knowing what it really is. If you're living in your head and thinking and thinking and thinking, that's your masculine side. Right. And your feeling side might be just completely smashed by it. Particularly if the mind is judgmental. Mm. Like a mental judge. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like now the males in my life, they don't need to play a particular role. Like I think I had them, they had to... Mm. Yeah. Almost like perform in a certain way or something, mm. like really horrible. Yeah. And no one has to do anything. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a huge turnaround, Kim. Sorry, what? That's a huge turnaround. Yeah, I don't know quite what's going on, but it um, feels yeah. good. Mm. <laughs> you That's know? beautiful. Um, That's it. That's it. Just yeah. keep allowing it and you will see. Suddenly you will see this effortless Masculine energy is just pure presence. It doesn't need to do anything. It's just, oh. you're, you're just absolutely going to be delighted by this genuine masculine because you think you can see the genuine masculine in the other. Oh, right. Okay. The genuine, yeah, it's yeah, a presence. Cool. That is what God is. is this yeah, no matter how, yeah, no matter how they might appear yes. on the outside. Mm -hmm. Because it's got nothing to do yeah. with physical so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I've been getting my hair cut by this hairdresser for years and we went out for a drink after my haircut yesterday and I, I just assumed he was gay because he has that appearance. <laughs> Bolt, you know? inside. <laughs> yeah, but, he, but he's not. You know, he's just got this very lovely softness and, mm -hmm. yeah, so I thought that's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. And he loves talking about, you know, forcing miracles and he's not read it, but it's, yeah, he's open. He's open. It's lovely. Yeah. 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 But first, all of it has to happen within us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like your feeling side and your mental side will marry, will unite. And that is the unifi inner unification. I just had no idea the amount of energy that's in, in it. Like, yes. I can't believe how much energy there is. It's just, it's just mind boggling. <laughs> and I have to do all this physical stuff because I have to do like, Yeah. It needs to, like, I don't know. Yes. That's what the, it, this is what they say, talk about when they talk to the elevated self of form. Right. It's become alive. Suddenly you feel like my experience was like, I used to say, I feel like a turbo turbo engine was attached up my rear, you know? So <laughs> it's like extra, <laughs> you know, like Harley Davidson. You're like. <laughs> yeah, it is like that. Like, I was like, because... shit, what is this thing? It's like you become so. You don't even know how to function in this world properly because you're so alive. I almost had to turn it down. Like when I was teaching at the school, I had to go like, I had to turn it down. I had to virtually make myself go dull. <laughs> you know? Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's very fortunate that I'm doing the Kung Fu because I don't know what I would do with all that energy, you know? Yes, yes, beautiful. Yeah. So you see your awakening. That's that's all this is doing with you, you know? And also yeah. doing all the righteous of all when you're allowing all these feelings that particularly the negative part of your feeling, you know, that the bad, what we call bad feelings, suddenly become oh. a part of you with more acceptance and love. And you yeah. realize that there was so much energy behind them, but you used all that energy to suppress it. Now you um, use that energy to express it. Whether it's good or bad, doesn't matter. You're no longer in yeah, yeah. a tree of a good and evil because you you know it's dumb. Yeah. That kicks you out of paradise if you eat from that comparisons of good and bad. It all becomes one. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Better calm myself down here. <laughs> Should we read a bit more, guys? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll I'll read um yeah, okay. Or oh, I'll have to go back a little bit. I'll go back a little bit. You do not see the natural grace and order of the universe extending into the realm of the elevated self. Mm-hmm. The space of the elevated self. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really just space to be yourself sort of thing. Yeah. As long as you see in this way, you keep the personal self in the forefront rather than allowing and aiding the personal self in the stepping back that is required mm -hmm. in order for the true self to step forward. Mm -hmm. All of this confusion and struggle is occurring because you do not know what to do to prepare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You have not been convinced that you are done preparing as you are done with learning. But there's no way to prepare because you've got no clue. No clue. What it is you're preparing, you know, like it's just not possible. Yeah. Beautiful. You still want to figure out what to do, what comes next, what you need to learn, how to better prepare for what is ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And yet you know that you have been prepared by me and that in union with me you cannot fail. You cannot fail to be prepared for you are already accomplished. Mm-hmm. What will it now take for your mind to accept this truth? For the mind's acceptance of this truth is what is needed. Bingo. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh. Mm-hmm. Because recently, the other week, I was uh, reading the text and there was a question, I can't remember what the question was, you know, to ask the Holy Spirit. So I thought, okay, I'll ask the question. <laughs> so I usually forget. And, and the thought came, you are the apple of my eye. Oh, oh I was just blown away. Like, because I know that wasn't coming from me. I would never think that, you know. And it just, I think it just really shifted Mm -hmm. Everything so much, like hearing that and knowing, really believing that it's true. Yeah. And that God is also the apple of my eye. Mm -hmm. and Beautiful. I don't know, something really shifted since then. And Yeah, you look shifted. Yeah, and it's, oh, it's, I just, it's so beautiful. I can't comprehend can't, it. Can't. And don't no. try because yeah. you can drown in the trying to figure it out. You yeah. will never figure out God. Yeah, Accept that. But, it's like, but it's like for the first time I really felt that oh, it, we communicated. Yes, beautiful. You know, whereas before it was, it didn't feel like that at all. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like, yes. Oh, that's, oh that's, he sees me. He really mm -hmm. sees me, you know. Like, that's it. Oh. Yes. This is so good. Yeah. And, and, and in that process, it's like, oh, I can be seen now. I can be myself you just watch your mind coming in i think your mind when it comes in 
It's a little yeah. bit of a danger because he wants to put it I... into some kind of box. It does. Yes. <laughs> that kills it in you. That drowns it. Yeah, it does, yeah. Mm. But it's funny because the ego part, I've, I've noticed what's happening, what, what it does in me. It, it gets all excited and it wants to tell everyone and explain it and, yeah. you know, and it gets all carried away with itself, but it's not real. It's like this yeah. fake, phony aspect. You got to, if what, if what you do with it, just give it by feeling it. Yes, feeling it. Feel it and give it. Give. Imagine you can communicate by giving feelings. Because <clears throat> yes. I can feel you perfectly right there. And I'm already hearing everything. You start talking, I'm going like, what is she now on about? I'm already got the message. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and last night when I went out for a drink with Stanley, he um because it's new, I haven't we're sort of developing a friendship which came from getting my hair cut or you know, for years. So I think I was a bit nervous, and so I just couldn't shut up, you know. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I forgot to just be quiet and feel, you know. Right, so, we, I think we're going to mute you now. I think this is where it yeah. needs to go. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else better read now. <laughs> yeah, this is what happens, you know. <laughs> yeah, you, so you get this energy. Watch out. You get this energy and you want to. You want to take it back here again. Don't, yeah. right? Like you yeah. don't. Just get the out of here. You know, like keep getting out of there. Like it's so simple. It's really just landing here and giving this and giving the feeling and sharing the feeling rather than sharing the idea so much. I, are they, and that's exactly what happened in our right use of will on Thursday. We mm -hmm. went into that quietness and it was, mm -hmm. oh, it was really strong. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't think anymore. Yes. That's it, yes. Beautiful, guys. How far do we need to go for this one? <laughs> okay, it's pretty long. Oh, it is. Shall we read a bit more? Oh. Yeah. Who is next? Andrew. Your heart knows the reality of this truth, mm -hmm. knows that this new reality is real and different from the reality of old. Ideally, mind and heart in union together accept this new reality and with this acceptance, the heart is freed to dwell in the house of the Lord, the new world, the kingdom that has already been prepared and so needs no preparation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing, huh? Mm. This acceptance is crucial to the elevation of the personal self. Without this acceptance, the personal self must still struggle and try, prepare and plan. Mm -hmm. It does not know how to do otherwise. You do not think you know how to do otherwise. Yes. I'm done. You are. I can't see it. This is the final surrender, mm -hmm. the surrender of the control of the personal self. Even with the ego gone, the personal self can continue to move about within the world. A faceless and nameless entity, a being without an identity, humble and selfless and ineffective. Yeah. There must be cause to engender effect. These anti-ego tendencies are a real danger in this time. Mm -hmm. You are not called to selflessness, but to self. Beautiful. You call. 
These anti-ego tendencies are a real danger in this time. What? Anti-ego tendencies are a real danger in this time. You are not called to selflessness, but to self. Is that, am I in the right place? Yes. Well, well we did read that. Oh. This is the tra transition you have felt yourself to be in. Yes. The ego is gone. But the true self has not been allowed as yet to dwell within a personal self, thus elevating the personal self. Wow, this is brilliant. You have thus been selfless for a time, and a personal self has floundered from this lack of identity. A person could literally die during this time from lack of identity, lack of cause. To die to the personal self is not what is required any longer as we work instead to elevate the personal self. Mm -hmm. This elevation occurs through the acceptance of your true identity, not through being identity-less. You'll see like even if the ego will acquiesce to this. The reign of the ego began during just such a time of identitylessness. <clears throat> you cannot go on in such a way. Help is here. Be what you have been called to be. Open your dwelling place to your true self your true identity. Imagine this opening and this replacement occurring with every fiber of your being, right? It's got to be felt all the way to your little toe. Imagine the separate self being enfolded, embraced, and finally consumed, taken into the self of union. The body of Christ becomes real through this indwelling of Christ in form far out. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you can't work hard on this course, you know, it just happens to you. Ooh. It almost does you despite you. Beautiful. Who else would like to read? I don't know, Sam, do you know what we're up to? Number 1.12. This thought makes you worry. I don't know where we are. Okay. We're our first chapter in a, in a book three in dialogues. First chapter. Yeah, first chapter in dialogues. Yeah. And we are 112. Does it start with, as was said, within? This thought makes you worry. Oh. 1.12. Yeah, the beginning of the chapter is um, Dialogues of a Course in Love, Book 3, Chapter 1, Acceptance of the State of Grace of the Newly Identified oh. Child of God. Yeah. Oh. Okay, this thought makes you worry about the identity of the one you have called yourself. This has been the purpose of many remaining ceremonies that symbolize the release of the old and the acceptance of the new. This occurs in one form or another in the sacraments you have known as baptism, confirmation, and marriage. 
Each of these invite a new identity. So too, do we invite a new identity now? While these sacraments have largely lost their meaning, the sacrament I now call you to, res to restore meaning. Since new names are only symbols of new identities, remaining is not required or ex expected here. We do, we go beyond what can be symbolized to what can only be known within. It is, it is to this state of grace that I call you now, today, the state of grace of the newly identified child of God. Open your heart for the one who dwells there in union with all with all will emerge from this opening. What was once a tiny, tiny pinprick of light becomes a beacon as you open your heart and allow your true identity to be what is within, and that is even within your form. You are in grace and union with the source and cause of unity. Be no longer causeless. You and your source are one. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Did I read that one or should I just? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> it's yours to be. It's yours to be read. Ah, okay. I am no longer the personal self who was separate and alone. Mm -hmm. I am my Christ self. Yes, you are. I dwell in unity. My identity is certain. This is the truth. I am not less than I once was, but more. Where once I was empty, I now am full. Where once I dwelt in darkness, I now dwell in the light. Where once I had forgotten, now I remember who I am. Now I go forth to live as who I am within the world, to make cause and effect as one, and union with the source of love and all creation and reality. Mm -hmm. How you guys going? We done? Mm -hmm. Good. I am. <laughs> yeah, I have to stop there. And I like the just the um and it says I'm not less than I'm not less than I was. I once was, mm -hmm. but more. Yeah. Oh. But more. Yes. And more and more is going to be discovered. Like it's endless. Mm. Kingdom of heaven is within. And when you find it and you begin to give it, you realize who you truly are. Mm. And it's never ending. Never ah. ending eternally, eternally. Yeah. And that's what abundance is. I think. Yes. Remember the word fulfillment is a like full feel. Yeah. Oh. Full feel. You're going to fully feel everything. Without feeling, we're only talking. Oh. <sighs> Feeling is the secret. All right, darlings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, how beautiful. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you, everyone. Thanks for sharing your, <laughs> the shine of your heart and feeling the love of God within. Yeah. You do. Thank you, Cole. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. See you, everyone. See you. Thanks, Cole. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.